I'm always talking about the fact that it's very important to pay attention to the things you're watching and not to have idols. This article I'm about to read is a prime example of why. This is from Kanye West's girlfriend's old art display. She had done a series back in 2017 and she named it, get this, Sex, Blood, and the Ritual of Rebirth. R.I.P. Julia Fox. Yeah. Yeah, there's that. This is one of the pieces she had on display during her exhibit. I'm going to attach an article that was done back in 2017. Uh, the, it's titled Sex, Blood, and the Ritual of Rebirth. R.I.P. Julia Fox. That was the name of her exhibit that she did. And... I'm going to uh, just kind of skim over parts of this so that you kind of have an idea of who Kanye is with. So it says in this article, Julia Fox has flirted with death several times, one time nearly overdosing at the age of 17. So with this exhibit that she did here, she said that she likes to touch on things that are historically taboo. So she likes the taboo realms. She's also into fetish work, sex work, um, also into ritualistic, sacrificial, yeah, I'll say it again, sacrificial and mystical arts. Yeah, it's in the article. It's also right in front of your face. Or in this picture, it's not in front of your face because as you see, she cut the head off the person there. Another interesting thing about this is you know, this art that you're looking at here as what they title art, it's done in blood. That's blood. She is using her own blood that she took, takes out in vials and then uses to paint. Yeah, she says that she extracts her own blood with a syringe and put, paints it on silk. Yeah, that's what she said. So, for those of you who say that Kanye is following Jesus Christ, you got to wonder which Jesus Christ he's following because, um, you know, R.I.P. There it says it. When Julia Fox had had her display here, that's what I'm going to call it, a public display, her art, her R.I.P. to herself here, who was the curator of the show? Who was it? Shazam Khan. Richie Shazam Khan. Let's look at him. Let's see. Any messages? Suck me off. There's a message. That's one. That's a message. I, I mean, I don't know if it's the one I would go for. Hey, here we go. Look at the snake. I guess I've always been fascinated with death. I've had a few near-death experiences. In one particular instance, I saw the infamous tunnel of light and felt my spirit elevate from my human body and shoot into space. I guess I've always wondered where I was going. I've always been curious. Subconsciously putting myself in dangerous situations. Perhaps because I would like to revisit that place. In this interview, she said, I love the way blood bleeds onto fabrics. I think the color is mesmerizing. I choose the silk because it's so feminine and that it's delicate, but at the same time, it's so strong and it's hard to tear through. I feel like blood is so precious and it's only right that it be displayed on a fabric which is just as precious. Publisher J. Fox, City, Milan, Italy, year 2016, pages 84, cover paperback, binding, perfect binding. Was that because of the blood? Anyway, um, I, I, I was exploring death in all forms one of them being sacrificial. 
death as an offering to the great creator. Energy can only be transferred. It can never die. During the sacrifice, the host died, but its energy lives on, possibly in another realm unbeknownst to us. But one day, we will all go there. That's the one thing we all have in common. We are all going to die one day. PTSD. Let's look through here. Remember, she does her work in blood. Read a little bit about the pentagram. Now, I will admit for me, honestly, at first, I used to think that the pentagram automatically meant you yeah, worship the devil. No, it goes back further than that. I admit I was a little wrong on that. The pentagram, yes, Aleister Crowley used it. They did use it for black magic, but it was used before that as well. So, you know, learning is always a good thing. So anyway, I'll, let's read this article. The pentagram, basically the graphic image of a five-pointed star, has existed as a symbol for at least two to five thousand years, when during the Stone Age it was carved into rock, no doubt with some spiritual tenor. Since then, it has, become, it has been in constant use by countless peoples and various ethno-religious and spiritual groups. Perhaps the most famous, the legendary King Solomon. These include the Greeks, the Babylonians, for which it represented the five elements, earth, air, fire, water, and spirit, but also the Chinese, the Hebrew, the Christians, ancient folk communities, everywhere, and more recently by occultists and spiritualists. The pentagram often has been has had sacred connotations, including its association with the Roman goddess Venus, who eventually morphed into Our Lady Mary and was later adopted by the Christians, especially but not exclusively to represent the five wounds of Christ. Since the 16th century, occultists and mystics, the early scientists such as Cornelius Agrippa, however you say that name, and esoteric groups such as the Rosicrucians, Freemasonry, and the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn have made exclusive use of the pentagram. Significantly now, of course, the neo-pagan Wiccan movement very much identifies with the ancient symbol. However, there was never any particular distinction in the orientation of the pentagram until the end, excuse me, until the mid 19th century. See, I just jumped to the end of the damn article, apparently. When the French self-styled magician Eliphas Levi wrote the book in which he person personally declared the symbol evil if pointed down. Following that, in 1897, the French occultist de Guarta, Guarita, however you say that name, I'm not sure, during the Sabbatic Goat, which by 1966 had become associated with Anton LaVey and his Church of Satan, together with its adopted deity, Baphomet. This is actually a misunderstood concept, and Levi never intended the deity to represent evil, but the absolute and the balance and the harmony of everything, male and female, mercury and justice, etc. Around 19, how, 1900, however, Aleister Crowley hijacked the symbol of the pentagram, inverted, to represent his representation of evil. The die was cast. This modern misconception of the inverted pentagram has since been reinforced in popular culture by its ubiquitous and repeated use by Hollywood's occult and horror film industry who have universally and continually exploited this theme. To conclude, therefore, the concept of the evil and the anti-Christian pentagram in a modern invention and its fact groundless and is 
in fact, groundless. Apparently, I just can't fucking read. Seen carved in the stones of ancient churches across Europe and decorating many temples of the Western world, Christianity has used a pentagram in both forms from the early Middle Ages, as demonstrated by the inclusion in the Amiens, Amiens, however you say that, 13th century cathedral, north transept rose window. So, a lot of misconceptions about this inverted pentagram has a lot of different connotations behind it. So a lot of us would like to make assumptions of what we think it is, but we have to remember that the symbolism that we put on things in the hermetic world often uh, vary depending on your degree and so forth. So just something to think on. Now, I'm not trying to judge Kanye, and I'm not trying to say that I don't believe that he's not a Christian. I do believe he be belongs to that 503C church of a sort. You know, uh, also another person who owned a church was Kris Jenner. Yeah, yeah. She made people pay dues to belong to her church, which is funny because the dues went to her church. But hey, that's another story all to motherfucking gather. My point on this video really is that people often claim to follow a religious belief and then they'll lead people and people will follow. And that's oftentimes how cults develop. So Kanye, you got to wonder, you know, I'm not trying to judge him because I'm not in his shoes. I don't know. Uh, fully what his intention is. I can't speak for his soul, but for someone who claims to be a, a, a born-again Christian and um, so forth, he sure has interesting choice in women to date. This woman used to be a adult entertainer. Uh -huh. She was into bondage. Yeah, she's into sex magic. She's into offerings and blood rituals. So I'm wondering what's being offered because this really looks like a scapegoat setup to me. Kind of like an iPet goat. You remember the scene where George Bush turns into Obama and you see the, the chalkboard with the hangman? And the hangman represents that scapegoat ritual. And then right after that, that scene, you see Psalms 23 which directly correlates to what scripture and how many bones in the body. Anyway, I've done a video on that, so I won't backtrack into that. My point is just be careful what you watch. Be careful who you follow. Be careful who you idolize. We're told not to make graven images. You know, if Kanye is dating someone who's into this type of craft, you have to wonder when you're looking at his music, what are you really looking at? You know, those frames per second snap by really quick and a lot of people can't tell what's really going on because they can't hear the binaural beats. They don't understand magic, much less high magic, much less any type of degree of knowledge that's above the standard. I don't know. I don't know, you guys. Just be wise. Be wise. My point in this video is just to kind of educate on different parts of information. I'm not trying to judge anybody. I'm not trying to say that someone is bad or good. I'm just trying to be neutral and share the news. And as far as Kim and Pete Davidson go, do I really think they're dating? No. No, what I think is that their corporate entities have connected on a business fashion. I think that it's um, a gimmick. I do not think they're dating. No, I, I don't. Not at all. Now, I do certainly understand that people change. Kanye, maybe he did go from being that old vain person into a new creation. Who am I to judge? It's not my place. But, you know, birds of a feather flock together and he seems to be flocking to the leather. 
the leather, the B and D S and M type bondage. I like to talk about freeing your dome. He likes to talk about bondage. Wu Tang is for the children. <laughs> Peace.